Hi. In this video, I'll show you how to load a data set, do a few simple data transformations, and then do various plots, various graphs of the data. Here we have the Oxmetrics program, just opened it. You can see to the left here, we have all the different data sets, graphics, code, and text with output that we have opened. So far, nothing. And then we have the different modules down here, the models, Garch, PZGIF, Stamp, and so on. We will primarily work with the PZGIF module in this course. So the first thing I want to do is just load my data set. So I click on open. I find the folder with my data and I select here the IN7 file and click open. So this is the consumption data set that you will also be working with in some of the exercises. So if I just click the data set here, you can see that the data set contains these six variables. So these are variables for Danish consumption, income, wealth, and so on, covering a period from 71, one. And if we just scroll down, we see that this data set ends in 2003, fourth quarter. So these are quarterly data. We can also see here that at the end, we have a few missing values that will be indicated simply by missing. This is what the data looks like. You can double click on a variable and you can change the name or you can add a variable description down here. So for now, just cancel that. I want to transform some of these variables. And to do that, we use what is called the algebra editor. I click model, go to algebra and we get the algebra editor open here. So the algebra editor, we can enter lines of code that will create new variables using some of these functions that you can see here. There's a full list of all the functions that you can use. So what I will do here is just create a few simple variables. The first one I'm going to call C. Note that it's case sensitive. So small letter C is not the same variable as capital C. So I'm going to create small letter C, which is just the log of the variable FCP, which is the private consumption in Denmark. So to do that, I enter log and then I write the variable name FCP, finish the parentheses, and then to end the line, I add a semicolon. The next variable I'm going to create is called Y, and that is just the log of income, which is given by the variable FYDP, like this. And again, close the parentheses and add a semicolon. The next thing I want to do is create the first difference of C and Y. And I'm going to create a new variable that I call DC, where D indicates that this is the difference. And I set that equal to diff. So this is the difference operator. And then I enter the variable C and then I write co uh, comma one like this. I finish with a parenthesis and a semicolon. So the one here indicates that I'm going to take the first difference. I'm going to do the same for y, like this, diff y, 1, and so on. If you want to do the year-on-year -year change, you just say change this from 1 to 4. The final function I want to mention now is called dummy. And if I go to the functions here, I find it here. Click the button here, write algebra code. Here you can see that this explains what this function actually does. So I will now create a dummy that I call 93. So this dummy variable is zero at all observations, except from 1990, third quarter. There we will have a value of one. So to do that, I say year one, I set to 1990, period one, I edit to three. And then the end of the ones that we have here, I also set to 1990, third quarter, like this. So this is going to create a dummy variable with a one in observation 90, uh, third quarter. Now, note that this algebra file here, you can choose to save it. And then it will be given uh, a name here, .alg. And in many cases, it's useful to save your data transformations here and then just save the original data set with a few variables included. Because after a while, you might have quite 
a lot of variables and you might not be able to remember exactly how you created it. So here, let's try to run it. And we can see that we immediately get these new variables. So here's the log of consumption, the log of income, and here are the first differences. Note that we of course get a missing value at the beginning here. You can manually enter a zero if you want to, just by clicking the cell. So that was the data transformations, a few simple ones that we will use at the beginning of the course. Next, we can do graphs. We go to model, we select graphics, or we press LG. We get the following up. Here is all our database variables, and to the left we have our selection. So now I want to make a plot of FCP and FYDP. And I can choose to do the actual series. That's going to put all the graphs in one graph or all the time series in one graph. Then I can do it separately. I can create a scatter plot or I can choose all plot types to give me a number of options, lots of different graph options here. For now, let's just plot the actual series like this. Now you see that we get the red line, that's FCP, the private consumption. The other one, the blue line is income. I can double click on the graph and here I can change the color if I want to or I can make it solid 30. I can click on apply and now we see all of a sudden I get a fatter line. I can also change the label if I want to change this to consumption. I just enter it here, click apply and you see here it's now called consumption. You can also edit the scales and you can do lots of things in here. So what I want to do now is plot the transform variables as well. C and Y. I'm going to put them in the same graph. Go back. I click the remove selection and then I also do the first differences. So here we have three different plots. You can click on a graph, click Control C and just insert it up here and you can see that it get uh, they will be pasted into the same graph. You can right, right click, press delete from graph, and then we can delete those two that we just added like this, click done, and we're back to where we started. Now, a very nice feature of Oxmetrics is that very often it's not clear what's going on in the graphs like this. We want to change the scales of the two variables to see to what extent they match each other. So a way to do that is to double click and then you can see here there's something called regression and scale. And now I'm gonna go to scaling and then I'm gonna say match by. Here you can match by the means of the variables, you can match by the ranges or you can do both. I'm gonna select means and ranges, click done. And what you can see here is that now the two graphs are matched both by their means and their ranges. So now they are on top of each other. Be careful, now we cannot really use the scale out here, but this gives us a very good overview of how these two move together. I'll just delete it here, go back to my graph window, and note here that if instead, for example, I wanted to do another graph, I could do, go to all plot types. Here I've selected C and DC, go to all plot types. And now let's say that I wanted to plot something like the autocorrelation function. I go to time series properties. Here you can see it. We have the autocorrelation function and the partial autocorrelation function. I'll create separate plots. I can actually here choose to apply a logarithmic transformation, growth rate, first differences, and so on. You can also change the sample period just by clicking the sample and change it here. So what I will do now is get the autocorrelation function. I selected to get separate plots and then I'll do the partial autocorrelation function as well. I click on plot and here we see two graphs. The first one is the autocorrelation and the partial autocorrelation function for the log of consumption. And here we have the same, but for the first difference of consumption. So the last thing I wanna mention is that you can now save this graph you can save it directly as, for example, a PDF file, PNG file. So that was all for now. 
Thanks for watching.